Hi everyone, thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. Like, subscribe. Yeah, that uh, helps promote. It's our Bodhisattva Act. We are, let's see how far we get into this. Uh, this is a longer uh, letter that, uh, or letter or writing or go show or one of Nichiren's writings on the Daimonku of the Lotus Sutra. And I'm not sure how we've gotten into it pretty deep, haven't we so far? Let's see. I don't know that it's important, but to know. Yeah, we got a couple more videos to go here. Anyway, we're going to continue with his discussion on our tenacity, our practice, our daimoku, daily daimoku, to train our minds to stay either in Buddhahood or Buddhahood adjacent, right? Keep it close by because nobody knows what's going to happen during our day. Sometimes explosions of karma, sometimes doubt, whatever. If our mind is trained to keep that Buddha nature, that Buddhahood close by, we can gain perspective, help us through instead of caving in and struggling so much, right? The passage in the Nirvana Sutra cited above says that just as all rivers and streams twist and wind, so too are women uh, perverse and devious. Remember what you were talking about. This is Nitrin quoting Shakyamuni, who was teaching at the time men whose super distracted minds on sex and breeding and ownership and women. I mean, to this day in India, women are property. So you got to keep in mind who the conversation is with here. I say this for you ladies because ultimate respect, Nitrin respects you, Shakyamuni respects you. And this is why he was having these discussions with men to get their heads out of their butts. So don't read into this that Shakyamuni and Buddhists are misogynist. Quite, quite the opposite. Buddha, uh, Shakyamuni caused tremendous upheavals in his lifetime for myriad reasons, not least of which that women could attain enlightenment what? Yeah. So, please understand the context here, right? Because water is a pliant substance, when its path is blocked by some hard object, such as a rock or a mountain, it will split into two streams or turn aside. Flowing now this way or now that, women are the same. Their minds are soft and weak. Though they may believe that a certain course is right, if they come up against the strong will of a man and find that they are blocked, and then they will turn in some direction quite different from the one they originally intended. Now, obviously, to a man that Shakyamuni is talking to, this is befuddling. Women, oh, they're so volatile. But you could also read that as, yeah, a woman doesn't waste her time with something in her way. She finds another way. That's quite an amazing quality, isn't it? Something men might do well to learn instead of <clears throat> pounding their head in one direction, oh, maybe there's another way to do this. Again, though you may trace pictures on the surface of the water, nothing that you have drawn will remain. 
Women are the same. For lack of steadfastness is their basic character. Now, that's a different statement. See that? The positive negative? Yes, it's good to be malleable and be able to... But if your malleability becomes the goal in itself, then you never really are going anywhere. You're just getting tossed around by the wind, or as I've described before, plummeting, falling through life, waiting for stuff to happen just so you could dance through it. There's no consistency. There's no resolve. There's no aim. Hmm? So that, that's true for both men and women, but women have that strong tendency, right? I'm not pointing fault or assigning blame. I'm just saying that's a feminine quality, thonic. Hmm? Women are the same, for lack of tithmatic. Hence, they will think a certain way at one moment, and then a moment later has quite a different view. Right? It's legendary. Women changing their minds all the time. It can be a good thing, but when it becomes a thing in itself, it is not a good thing. But the basic character of a Buddha, whoa, is honesty and straightforwardness. Hence, women, with their devious ways, can never become Buddhas. You see how this is the early idea, the Indian caste system, the misogynistic interpretation? Women are doomed to the five obstacles and the three types of obedience. Hence, the Silver-Colored Woman Sutra says that even if the eyes of the Buddhas of the three existences were to fall to the ground, no woman could ever attain Buddhahood. Great perfection of wisdom says that one could sooner catch the wind than grasp the mind of a woman. Now hang on, ladies. Don't get insulted. There's, After all, there's some truth to this, but it's not, it's not solely in men or women. It's the human animal. But the feminine, whether it's nature or nurture, I don't want to have that argument. Let's just explore this human tendency. Yeah? Yet though all female beings were so despised in the various sutras, when Bodhisattva Manjushri spoke the single character Myo, a woman was instantly able to become a Buddha. Ah, So extraordinary was this occurrence that Bodhisattva wisdom accumulated, the foremost disciple of the Buddha many treasures in the world of the treasure purity, and the venerable Shariputra, who was known among the thus come one Shakyamuni's disciples as the foremost in wisdom, protested. Wait, 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 wait. How this woman suddenly become a Buddha? How is that possible? They said that according to all the Mahayana and Hinayana sutras that the Buddha had preached in the previous 40 years and more, the dragon king's daughter could not possibly become a, a Buddha. Remember, this is in the Lotus Sutra here. And yet, in the end, their arguments were of no avail. And in fact, she did become a Buddha. Aha! Thus the passage in the Buddha's first sutra declaring that women, quote, can destroy the seeds of Buddhahood, end quote, and that in his final sermon in the Sal Grove about how, quote, all rivers and streams are inevitably, invariably winding and devious, end quote, were utterly contradicted, seemingly. And the views were utterly contradictory, and the views reflected in the silver colored woman sutra and great perfection of wisdom were proven to be nonsense. 
wisdom accumulated, and Shariputra were obliged to still their tongues and shut their mouths, while all the human and heavenly beings present at the great gathering where the Lotus Sutra was preached pressed their palms together in an excess of joy. All this was due entirely to the virtue of a single character, Myo. What does that mean? Remember with Myo, just like all the characters of the Daimoku, and every one of the 69,384 characters, can't believe I remembered that number, in the Lotus Sutra, which represent the countless 84 or 80,000 teachings, that depth of understanding, that depth of context, that depth of profundity that we invoke when we chant Namo Myo Renge Kyo, just that, just one character, what it represents is so profound that whatever earthly obstacles in the mind to Buddha-ness, whether you're man, woman, any sentient mind, even what was considered at the time the most impossible women. There's no sex to Buddha. There's no genitalia to Buddha. There's no limitation of life experience to Buddha. Buddha-ness is Buddha-ness. And therefore accessible to all life, all phenomena, in fact. petty politics of misogyny or what pronoun you call yourself, Pleh. that's just samsaric politics, monkey minds. It's bullshit. The important thing is your capacity for the entire potential that is life, that is the entire universe, that is instantiatable moment to moment in your freight train of karma along with all the other freight trains Buddha-ness is the one consistent pinnacle of life and existence and experience there's no sex or politic or culture or language to that it just is hmm the top of the mountain is the top of the mountain, whatever your accent, nationality, sex, pfft, what, it doesn't matter. In this southern continent of Jampudvipa, there are 2,500 rivers, and every single one of them is winding. Yeah, male, female, other. They are devious like the minds of the women of Jampudvipa, like our favorite example right now. And yet there is one river called the Sahaya that follows a course as straight as a taut rope, flowing directly into the Western Sea. A woman who has resolve in the Lotus Sutra will be like this river, proceeding directly to the pure land in the West. Such is the virtue inherent in the single character Mio. So, ladies, I hope you understand this example. It's saying, for all the noise in the minds of men and women, and whatever you call yourself, in the modern world, modern world, in the world of antiquity, throughout all time and space, your social standing your political beliefs, your race, culture, sex, whatever, it is completely irrelevant. Irrelevant. Because a mind is a mind is a mind. And the experience, the Buddha-ness, the Buddha-nature, it's inherent in all phenomena. 
it, it, it isn't a different color or a different expression and different. It is Buddhaness. It is the reality that is every single phenomena of this universe. All of the rest is just samsaric propaganda. So Buddhism then, true Buddhism, Shakyamuni's ultimate teachings of the Lotus Sutra, it's equanimous. Right? Myo means to revive. Interesting. That is to return to life. Like I said, everything else is propaganda. Layers of obfuscation. Great word. The truth, the fundamental truth of all phenomena, it doesn't change because you have propaganda or weird ideas or that's just temporary social, personal, whatever. That's not Buddhaness. Buddhaness doesn't change. The universe doesn't change course because you suddenly decided some bizarre factoid you want to create for yourself or your friends or your group. Leaders of the world wake up. Hmm? For example, it is said that though the chick of a yellow crane may die, if the mother crane calls the name of Tsuan, then the dead chick will come back to life. Or in the case of the fish and the shellfish that have been killed because a poisonous bird called a chen has entered the water, it is said that if they are touched by a rhinoceros horn, they will all be brought back to life. Now, these are fanciful old folklore stories from the expedient means. But I think you can understand that rather than taking those things literally, these are stories of folklore that have this example of stamina, of steadfastness that overrides all of these other temporary conditions, obstacles, struggles, that in the face of the truth, they're minimal. You still go through them. But when you put them in proper perspective, they don't have such a hold on your every breath. Yeah? Similarly, persons of the two vehicles, Ichantikas and women, were described in the sutras as preceded the Lotus Sutra as having scorched and killed the seeds that would have allowed them to become Buddhas to attain enlightenment, right? Stubborn people, Sharvakas, Prachagabhutas, Arhats, and women. They're too much, their minds are too messy to ever get the clarity of Buddhaness, right? These are the early teachings. Why? Because Shakyamuni had to slap some heads around, not literally, but Say, this, this is the situation you guys are in. Please take seriously the effort required to get out of that messy mind of yours and invest, feel hmm, convinced that there's a better mind in you, already there. It's just clouded by all this bull crap. Right? But by holding fast to this single character, Myo, they can revive these scorched seeds of Buddhahood. Because they're still there. And so that kind of says that the scorched seeds require that you continue to scorch them. If you stop scorching them, 
they'll come right back up. Right? But that's not how we think. We think once something's done, it's done. You've forgotten moment to moment. Bertet, bertet, bertet. Everything's in transitions constantly. Tindai says, quote, the Ichantikas are persons of incorrigible disbelief, nevertheless have minds. And so it is still possible for them to attain Buddhahood. But persons of the two vehicles have annihilated consciousnesses and therefore cannot arouse the mind that aspires to enlightenment. Ouch. And yet the Lotus Sutra can cure them which is why it is called Myo, or wonderful. And you know what that makes me think of? I'm living in the Bible Belt in the United States. And I don't know if it's fair to call it the Bible Belt anymore, because, yeah, there's a lot of old-time religion here. But the United States, boy, and I don't know how it is in the rest of the world, but living here, I can tell you, that Christianity has been mollified, modified, and become a militant, angry, hell-bent, nope, every pun intended, on Armageddon. It's become a fascist pursuit in this country. It doesn't even represent whatever they might have called the teachings of Jesus. It's become a politically motivated angry, destructive thing. And so, why do I say this? Not because I want to start a war, <laughs> but because people's minds, and certainly in the last decade, we've learned that once people make up their minds, quote unquote, with very little logic they've just adopted a position you might think well they're lost there's no way you can ever reach those people they they they're like they'll smile at you hearing themselves say the most obscenely crazy things and smile as though ha, how are you going to talk me down from that <laughs> right people ins insane how can you save those people, Sifu? How can you talk to somebody who's so declarative in their, in their scorched seeds of Buddhahood? How can you <laughs> possibly? Well, here it is. Namo myo renge kyo. Namo myo renge kyo. You ever heard that? What? Namo myo renge kyo. Can you say it? I ain't gonna, but okay. But just namo myo renge kyo. You've heard it three times now. When you're interested, if you're interested, whenever you're interested, look me up. Come talk to me. In the meantime, I'm gonna avoid you like the plague. Well, you don't say that, but <laughs> right? For your own health and welfare, stay the hell away from it. You don't want to get into a war with somebody like that because they have nothing to lose. The point is, myo. Myo. Yeah. That person has Buddhahood as part of their nature. They just are working so hard to squelch it. Uh, that's so sad. But that doesn't mean it can't be enlivened. Even then. Miao Lo says, quote, The reason that the other sutras are called great but not, um, but not myo, is simply that it is easy to cure those who have a mind, but difficult to cure those who are without a mind. Like I said, insane. They have a mind, but they're not using it. They've constructed, back to my analogy of databases and warehouses, they've constructed a moat around their mind that disallows the blue sky and the environment into it. They're stuck in their own disease of thought. They've cut themselves off from thinking. 
but their mind's still there. Because it is the Lotus Sutra can cure what is thought to be incurable, it is called Myo or wonderful. Right? It's in the title. These passages refer to the fact that the sutras such as the great and vast Buddha Flower Garland Sutra, the, the Vatamsaka, the Kigan, the Flower Garland, the Great Collection Sutra, the Perfection of Wisdom Sutra, and the Great Nirvana Sutra all have the character great in their titles, but not the character myo or wonderful or amazing or outstanding or right this is because they can only cure the living but are unable to cure the dead the lotus sutra however can cure the dead as well as the living and therefore it has the character myo in its title myo horenge kyo all right don't panic we're not talking about raising the dead we're talking about dead minds right Living creatures with minds that refuse to grow. Dead minds. Remember, birth, dead, birth, dead, birth, dead, birth, dead, birth, death. Hmm? If your next birth is a reinstantiation of death, 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 you're still moment to moment, right? There's always an opportunity to awaken a mind. As long as it exists. Thus, with the other sutras, persons who should by rights become Buddhas cannot do so. But with the Lotus Sutra, even those who would ordinarily find it impossible to do so can attain Buddhahood, not to mention those for whom it is relatively easy. This being the case in the time since the Lotus Sutra was preached, there ought not to be a single person who adheres to the other sutras. It should be. It should be obvious, painfully so. Let alone those who would misinterpret and use the Lotus Sutra for their own gains. Ugh. Now the 2,000 years of the former and middle days of the law have passed, and we've entered the latter day of the law. In such an age, it is 100,000, 10,000 million times more difficult for ordinary people to attain Buddhahood or rebirth in the pure land than it was for even the persons of the two vehicles or each antikas who lived when the Buddha was alive. Because they had a living example, yeah? But now people are free to roam, go all sorts of weird places in their heads. And yet people nowadays think that by relying on the Meditation Sutra or some other of the sutras preached in the more than 40 years before the Lotus Sutra, they can escape the sufferings of birth and death. How futile, how utterly futile. Man, can you hear Nietzschean right now? If, how can you how can you not know women whether they live at the time of the Buddha or in the former middle or latter day of the law cannot attain Buddhahood through any teaching but the Lotus Sutra no other teachings will get you to Buddhahood because those teachings didn't provide for that accessibility. They don't have myo. They don't have the ultimate awakening formula. Myo rengekyo. They don't have it. Therefore, in those very teachings, you are limited. Why are you following a teaching that limits your attainment? Well, why would you do that? None of the other sutras expounded by any of the Buddhas anywhere can help them. The great teacher Tendai, Chishe, 
who heard the Buddha's teachings at Eagle Peak and later attained an awakening in the place of meditation, he stated unequivocally, quote, the other sutras only predict Buddhahood, so on and so forth, for men, but not for women. This sutra predicts Buddhahood for all, end quote. Women, ladies, you should take this personally. Lotus Sutra, Namu Myo Renge Kyo, this is your ticket to enlightenment, as it is for all sentient minds. Why waste another second pursuing some other, right? And as always, follow the law, not the persons. Don't be enamored by some charismatic whatever. Look at the teaching. What does the teaching provide for you? There's only one. None of the others. Thus come one Shakyamuni in the presence of many treasures, Buddha and the Buddha, the, all the Buddhas of the Ten Directions, preached the Lotus Sutra over a period of eight years at the place called Eagle Peak, or Vulture Peak, depending on whose translation you read, northeast of the Rajriga Griha in the kingdom of Magadha. The great teacher Tendai, Chi Che, was present and heard him preach. During my 50 years of teaching, said the Buddha, I have preached various sacred doctrines, all in order to bring benefit to living beings. In the sutras of the first 42 years, I taught that it is not possible for women to attain Buddhahood. But now, with the Lotus Sutra, I declare that women can become Buddhas. Is this because Shakyamuni deigned? Okay, ladies, you can become Buddhas now. No, 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 no. It isn't Shakyamuni that provided that. What Shakyamuni was saying is if you understand Buddhahood correctly, then there's no exclusion. The exclusions are constructed, society, man-made, women-made, propaganda-made. They're not real. That's what he's saying. And the only sutra, the only sermon, the only teaching that makes that explicit is the Lotus Sutra. That's what he's saying. Northeast of Eagle Peak, at a distance of some 108,000 ri beyond the mountains and seas, there's a country called Mahashina in Sanskrit. We know it as China. Some 1,500 years after the Buddha's passing, there appeared in this country a messenger of the Buddha called the great teacher Tendai, Chi Che, who declared that women could never attain Buddhahood through any other teaching than the Lotus Sutra. And we'll continue with that. I'm trying to limit the... the time of my videos... So I don't, you know why. But this one, this one should be, I would think, quite inspiring to you ladies out there. And to men as well. Knowing that we needn't fear that we're, we're having to drag our women along with us. You hear that rhetoric? Ladies... You're just as Buddha as men or any other sex. The sentient mind has no limits. And that's what we're all pursuing. Men, women, or other. Any human with a sentient mind has the opportunity to instantiate Buddha-ness right now, this moment. Namu myoho renge kyo. The more you study, the more you chant, the more real that experience becomes. You feel it. You feel it. It's guaranteed. 
no exclusions. How amazing is that? How magnificent. There's nothing else like it I've never found. Everything else I've ever studied in my life is about exclusion. Not not Lotus Sutra Buddhism. Namo Myoda Gego. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your practice. Keep that going. Right? Immerse yourself in it. Namo Myoda Gego. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. Support any way you can. That is the first step. Bodhisattva. Like and subscribe so that we can be more present in the YouTube algorithms. If you can, support this channel in other ways. Buy some books from the bookstore. Use the free information on threefoldlotus.com so that you become more versed and have better reference tools. It's free, right? Get a, a Nichiren inscribed mandala. And if you can, use the Patreon or Somebody was emailing me. They were having trouble with Patreon, the limiting their donations. I, I, I haven't heard that from anyone else, so I'm hoping it's a singular problem. But let me know. Oh, oh, oh one thing if I could ask of you before we close. I should have started with this. I'm, hopefully I'll remember in the next video to bring it up again. How, I think it would be amazing if you just took a moment in the comments section to say, Hey, my name's Craig. I'm practicing in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Hi, my name's Judy. I'm practicing in uh, Christchurch, New Zealand. Hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm practicing in Yugoslavia. I just love to see like a little head count. Hey, I'm here. I'm practicing. This is where I am in the world. Because I know our Sangha is worldwide. I think it would be really neat to kind of get a little shout out from each of you. I, please, please do that. It's just, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be complicated, just Frank, Fiji, <laughs> you know, wherever you are in the world. I would love to get that sense of our Sangha because you know me, I think the 8 billion people on the planet are the Sangha, just many billions aren't aware of it yet. But our influence all over the world, yeah, it's going to start to connect those dots. That's exciting. That's amazing. So, yeah, take a moment. Just, you know, Pradeep, Southeast India. It doesn't have to be any more than that. Just a shout out. I think that would be amazing. I hope you do that. In the meantime, keep your practice strong. Thank you for being here. And I'll see you in the next one real soon, okay? Namo myo renge kyo. Bye for now.